Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I am listing tablecloths. Some of them are vintage, some of them are not so vintage, even though when I'm looking at the definition of vintage I'm slightly saddened because things that I'm like, that's not vintage, that's like 10 years, no, that's like a long time ago and I'm old, which makes me sad. All of these tablecloths are pre-2000, most of them are 90s and older. So with that, it's, you know, vintage-ish. Um, actually, the tablecloth I am listing right now just sold, which was great because I didn't know how to describe the color. Not only did it sell, I got a pot back for it. And, you know, sometimes it's so difficult to describe colors. Some blues, some purples, some greens, grays are very hard. I called this off white. I couldn't tell if it was green or beige or, you know, like what color is this? And in the description, I was very honest about it. And sometimes it's just very hard to tell the colors of these things. Now, I listed several plain tablecloths. They had tags at some point, but were clearly cut off. And it drives me nuts when people cut off tags and my middle daughter cuts all the tags off of all of her clothing because it's a sensory thing. So I'm trying to be more flexible and be like, why'd you cut the tags off? The, but it's been a long time since I've listed these. I listed these probably the end of June, beginning of July. I have not listed a lot this summer. And as I'm recording this video, it is August 19th. School has started back for us. We have all been back for a week, including myself. And I've had no time to list anything and to throw something on top of it. We've had a very, very busy summer with activities and stuff. And I decided the week before school started, like to the day, I was going to break my foot. So those of you that have watched my videos last year, I had to have hand surgery the week before school started last year. This year, the week before school started, I saved 100 puppies from a burning truck, or I stubbed my toe on a box that was in my bedroom that I said for the past six months I was going to take to downstairs and put away of papers that I have to save for my job. And I stubbed my, my right toe. I, I lead with my right foot. I'm right dominant foot and hand. And stubbed my right little tiny pinky toe on the box and it stayed and I kept walking. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Um, I thought I just broke my pinky toe. It was completely facing the side, like completely shaped like an L to the side. I thought I just broke my pinky toe, so I popped it back into place. It was immediately swollen and bruised. And then my foot started to swell. My husband saw it and we went to prompt care. He said that, no, I think you did more than break your toe. And we went into prompt care and unfortunately I broke my pinky toe. I broke the knuckle of my pinky toe and I broke the top of my fifth metatarsal. So the long bone that runs on the outside of your foot. I am in a air cast which is great. I'd rather have an air cast than a normal cast. The only downfall is, is I am a horrible, horrible patient. I take this thing off all the time. I'm currently sitting on my bed with it off. Granted, it's been almost three weeks, but still horrible patient. I shouldn't be driving. I drive. I do take it off when I drive. I basically walk around the house with it off and I just hobble around. However, the pain is much better today. It, it's been, it's been progressively getting better for the past three days, but that's also unfortunate because if it doesn't hurt, I'm probably going to do something stupid and re-break it. The podiatrist that I went to see was very happy with how I was healing. In fact, he said for somebody my age, he was very impressed with how quickly my bones were healing. So I was both offended and happy at the same time. But because of that, I am not mobile. I have not been mobile for three weeks. Uh, my foot has been stupid swollen, throbbing, purple. It, it's bad. Um, 
I don't have the ability, even now that it's feeling better, I don't have the ability to stand for several hours to photograph. So I photograph nothing. And as I said in a previous video, I am basically out of photos. I don't have, my box is empty. I need a backlog of photos. I did not get a chance to front load my photos before school started. So I didn't get that chance and I don't have photos to work through through this semester. And I'm really, really busy this semester. My kids are very busy. My oldest is an eighth grader. Eighth grade is a very transition year. He's taking two high school classes in the morning. He's having to be shuttled back and forth. I'm working in the morning, then I have a break, and then I'm working in the afternoon. Sports start this week. It's just like when, when, when. Everyone says I'll miss it when it's gone, and I do miss it when we have downtime. The My middle child on um, Friday, I was like, guess what we have to do after school today? And she started getting very upset because she's just really overwhelmed. And I was like, nothing. We don't have to do anything after school. I can just pick you up and bring you home today. And she was so excited, so excited, which is great and sad um, because with open houses and everything after school, the, we've literally done something after school every single day this week. And it's just open houses, get to know yous, prompt care visits, uh, not for me, but for my son, he had to go to prompt care. It's, it's been a crazy week. But the first week is always the hardest. And I always tell my kids the first week is always the hardest. We have two very commonly used sayings in our house. Well, we have more than two, but we have two that we do use a lot. And it's the how do you eat an elephant? And that's one bite at a time. And we're going to eat the frog. So I guess both of our sayings we use a lot involve eating animals, which is kind of humorous if you think about it. But you eat an elephant one bite at a time. You just chip away at your tasks. Now, for all three of my children, that's something different. For my husband, that's something different. For me, that's something different. I like to write very detailed to-do lists. Not like clean the kitchen, but I'm like, put all the dishes away out of the dishwasher. Wash all the water bottles. Clean top of stove use ice makers, stuff like that. I'm very, very specific in my to-do lists. So that gives me more things to mark off. Like tomorrow I have, you know, all three of my children are getting showers. So I have each of them listed needs to get shower. Then I have have to find soccer stuff for all three of my children. So instead of saying find soccer stuff, I have like find blanks soccer stuff. Find Another one's soccer stuff. Find soccer balls, soccer shoes, you know, cleats, all of that. The, so that's all, it, that's how I handle it. So I know that I'm actually doing something because if I say, you know, find soccer stuff, but I don't find one of my kids cleats, then I can't mark that off. But if I have it broke down, then I can knock it off the list much easier. But again, being injured kind of took me out of the game for a bit. And also with that comes it'll, the inevitable medical bills. I've had to have four x-rays so far. So that will be a lot. And I will have to have x-rays again on the 12th of September when I hopefully get to get rid of my cast my air cast. So that'll be nice. Luckily, I didn't have to get a knee scooter. I didn't have to get a, you know, crutches or anything. I did. We went to the state fair for my kids 4-H shows. So it was a non-negotiable. We had to go to the state fair and I ended up renting an electric scooter, which I got dirty looks for until I stepped out and people realized I was in an air cast. But when I was just cruising around in the scooter, I was getting side eye pretty hard because they couldn't see below my knee where the cast was. Also, we went a little bougie and got the double wide scooter so my daughter could ride in it with me because she was pooping out and getting kind of tired. And my husband and son were able to just walk with us. So 
it was me and her in the scooter and I don't know if they thought we were just joyriding or if I took the scooter from somebody that really needs it. I did not. There was a bunch of them there. They cost a crap ton of money, but it was totally worth it. Even the part I did walk, I was really, really sore. And granted, this was like a little over a week after I had originally broke my foot. So I was still swollen, still sore, still tired. But I still pushed myself and did walk around the fair a bit because there were places my scooter just couldn't go. The, and and, you know, that's money. And that's one of the things we do eBay for is the, oh, wow, where'd that expense come from? You know, a kid has a cavity or I randomly break my foot. Thank God I didn't need surgery. I didn't even need a hard cast. When I went to my appointment last week, that was going to be the decider if I needed a hard cast or not, because I was so swollen with my first x-rays, they really couldn't tell if the bone was going to move or if it was just going to stay in place. Lucky for me, everything looked great on my last x-rays. My bone is fusing well. I already have a bone callus on my metatarsal. Unfortunately, I'm waiting for my pinky toe to callus and it's still not joining its friends. So I'm going to have to buddy tape it to make sure that it's not deformed, which will be awesome. I just want to be able to wear tennis shoes again. I will be in tennis shoes for the next six months and I will not be running any more 5Ks with my son until I get cleared by the doctor because we don't want to have a stress fracture. So yay. Uh, With all of that being said, the amount of old men that have stopped me in grocery stores and stuff to talk about my boot, ask me what happened, ask me how long I'm in it, make jokes that, you know, that's not, my shoes don't match, stuff like that. Um, Better watch out in the winter, it'll get slippery. And I'm like, I'm not going to be in this boot in the winter. It's kind of ridiculous and hilarious at the same time. The... I am getting around much better now with it, so I'm hoping to get doing eBay. I did sell a couple things this weekend, which is great because, again, I haven't been listing anything actively. However, all of my eBay inventory is downstairs, so I have to walk down 13 carpeted stairs to go get it, and sometimes it's downstairs, and sometimes it's downstairs and in the garage, which is a lot of walking, and my life is not together. It's a mess. So my house is a mess and I can't get a sure footing in some of the spots. So my husband's really had to step in and pull the inventory for me because I just don't have the ability to get to it. I'm not very agile. And I'm in one of the hard boots that goes almost to your knee. So it's not a foot. It's not like a foot one. I It goes almost up to my knee because when I break something, I break something. But upside on the mint, downside, I just lost three weeks and was part of my more productive weeks. Also, I picked up more hours at my job. So I actually went from part time to full time for this semester, which means yay, a lot more pay, which is great. The downside, a lot more commitment. So I'm not sure how, you know, how I will be able to list or photograph or do any of that time-wise. I basically leave at 7.30 in the morning and don't get home until 4, which is great hours, but not my usual hours. I usually have time in the middle to get stuff done while the kids are in school. I don't now. I don't come home to do that which is unfortunate. We've gone back and forth on if we're going to drop our eBay store down because we don't have time to list. Even going, putting on vacation for extended periods of time, ending our listings and then relisting them. All of this are things where we've been thinking about. We haven't decided on anything yet. October, we may put our store on vacation just because it's an incredibly busy month for kids, for my work, for my husband's work. And just adding that extra trip to the post office may be too much for us. So 
We're either thinking about putting it on vacation for all of October or putting our handling time all the way up to five days so we don't have to go to the post office every day. We can like hold off and go to the post office every Friday or Wednesday or whatever, just once a week. So we're thinking about all of that. And those are things you have to think about when life changes. Like I've said in previous videos, this is completely and totally part time for us. This is not full time. We are not relying on this to pay bills. This is not going to break us if we don't sell anything on eBay. It is an added bonus if we do sell something on eBay. It always helps. Even small sales always help because that's money we did not have before. I will say we're going to have to do a big inventory purge at the end of this year. There are some items we've had for entirely too long and I don't want to become a warehouse. So I am looking pretty heavily on probably reducing our inventory by half. But for me to do that, I would like to have 800 listings. So I would feel okay with getting rid of like 300 items where before, you know, I, I want to have 500 items in my store. 500 is our sweet spot. Everybody's sweet spots are different. 500 is our sweet spot. There was a drastic difference in sales between 450 and 500. So I never want to drop below 500 again. We have roughly 700 in our store right now. I would love to have 800 before I start deleting listings. But this is where it's a catch 22. The more I list to get up to 800, the more I'm going to sell, which is amazing and great, but it could take me a very long time to reach that 800. So th that is all things we are thinking about at the moment. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.